Hey guys, so I thought I would do a video on what kind of art supplies I use and I'm not doing a voiceover. If you prefer this format more than the voiceovers, then please tell me. It'll really help with formatting in the future. And um, I'm covering this. <laughs> I accidentally spilled some water, so please don't mind this. It should dry up soon. Um, so I'm going to start with the palettes I use. I use three different palettes usually. This is my main palette. It's from Mijello and it's their studio palette. So I should start with disclaimers actually. A lot of these art supplies that I have are either hand-me-downs from my parents or they are products that were sent to me for a review. And I'm going to clear up a misunderstanding that a few of you seemed to have in my other video. but. Magello isn't paying me to um, make these videos. They just send me a lot of products for me to try out and they've never explicitly told me to make videos for them. Um, I just willingly made the videos because I ended up really liking their watercolors and wanted to show you guys the watercolors as well. So yeah, please do not think that I'm trying to sell these products to you guys. Um, all of the reviews that I've posted are my true actual opinions of those products and it was just surprising to see people fighting about watercolors in my comments it was kind of funny anyways this is the main palette that i'll use it's the studio palette from magello and they actually sent me this as a gift which was really really nice of them this palette is made out of three parts there's this section this section and this top one here this top one has all of my paints from Magello or the main colors that I use and these two bottom sections. This one has my specialty colors from Magello, um, usually colors that I don't use often or I don't want mixed in with those colors. And um, these colors are from Holbein, M. Graham, and Daniel Smith that I will also use as well. But this palette is really, really big and a little cumbersome. So if I want to downgrade a size so that I can travel comfortably with it, then I will use this palette here. This is also Magello and this is their Pan palette. And this one always seems to come out. I don't really know how to fix it, but... Yeah, um, this is another one that I like to use. It has a lot of colors and good palette space, so if I don't want to carry that around, then um, I'll use this. But nowadays, I've found myself using this palette more, actually, when I want to downgrade a size. It's this really small palette with just a few colors, and I really like to use this with my sketchbook since um, it has enough colors to get the general idea across, so I'll use this in my sketches, which kind of brings me to my sketchbook. This is the sketchbook I use. It's from Global Arts, and I've never really stuck with a watercolor sketchbook, but I really, really like this one. This is my second copy or my second sketchbook from them. I just really like how the watercolors react to the paper. The, originally, the cover is black, but I always paint on them. So on this page, I just did some quick color studies, and you can see that the watercolors are still really vibrant, and I think you would only know what I'm talking about if you've ever tried this sketchbook. It's just really nice to watercolor with. It has a light tooth to it, and it's just really nice to use. Here's a page where I took two colors that I liked and kind of tried mixing them together. So you can see that the paper isn't really strong. Like I had tape here and it kind of damaged the paper when I took it off. It was masking tape too, so it really shouldn't have. And the paper's not really thick. It's not as thick as cardstock. It's a little thicker than regular printer paper. If you're looking for a cheap sketchbook, then I recommend this one. They sell this on Amazon, so I'll leave a link in the description box below. When I'm doing more serious paintings or more serious um, concept sketches, then I'll use this paper. This is the Arches or the Arch. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. The Arch, Arch watercolor paper. And I have a lot of these just because there was like this huge sale a couple of years ago for Christmas and um, originally, this is $25 a pad, but 
I ended up getting it for $5 a pad, so I bought a bunch of these. I've also been using Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, which is really, really good, so I recommend those two brands for when you're doing more serious paintings. I also like to use these big buckets for water and I like to work with a minimum of two buckets. Usually I would work with three. I have this bucket where I keep all of my paintbrushes and pencils. So in that bucket I have these um I have these toothpicks. And I like to use these for applying masking fluid. For pencils, I will either use mechanical pencils, just really cheap dollar mechanical pencils, or I will use these two wood pencils. This one is from Mitsubishi and it's in 10B. And this is the Tombow Mono 100 in HB. So the 10B is really, really nice for sketching and the HB is really nice for doing a preliminary sketch for a painting. So these two are the main ones that I will use. One of the most common questions I receive on Instagram is what kind of brushes I use. Um, I actually just like using these cheap brushes from Daiso. So if you've ever been to a Daiso, you've probably seen these before. It comes in a pack of five or six brushes and they're all only $1.50 like all together. So yeah, they're really nice. They have synthetic bristles so they don't really get a lot of wear in them. But if they do, I'll just go out and buy another pack since they're so cheap. But they have a nice tip to it and if they don't, I'll just like kind of give it a haircut. And I'll use these for my round brushes. I also have these brushes. Stay. I also have these brushes and these are quill brushes or squirrel brushes from Da Vinci. So I like using these when I'm working with a lot of water. So um, these are the flat brushes that I have. There's one from Barbara, one from Princeton Arts and Brush Co. And this one is also from Princeton, but I like to use this shorter one for doing wetter washes. And I have this angled tipped one from Craft Smart. I also have these flat brushes, so these brushes are really useful for doing really big flat washes and I really enjoy using these. I don't know what these brands are, but maybe you guys can find them. They're really good for like cleaning your keyboard too. For miscellaneous brushes, I have this oval tipped brush from Princeton. I also have this brush, which I think is originally supposed to be used for calligraphy, but I like to use it for watercolors when I'm doing really wet washes. This was sent to me by JetPens and this is really nice for doing precision work, like doing line art and stuff. So these are all the brushes and pencils that I'll use for my sketches. As for some miscellaneous products, I have this white ink and this is from Dollar Rowney and it's the Acrylic Artist's Ink. I think this is pretty common, you can find it anywhere. And for masking fluid, I'll use this fine line masking fluid. It's nice because it comes with this really fine needle tip. I don't normally work directly from the needle tip because it's just kind of hard to control, but it's nice to have in some occasions. So yeah, you can find both of these on Amazon. So thanks for watching and I'm planning on doing more beginner watercolor videos um, like how to use your water, like do's and don'ts for beginners, etc. So I'm planning on filming that soon. So thank you guys for watching again and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks!